the peregrine falcon, the world's fastest bird and also the world's fastest animal. It is probably the best known and most beloved of all the large falcons, and for good reason. It is a species that has long been marvelled for its incredible high-speed dive or stoop in the air with which it attains such incredible speeds. Also infamous for its tremendous striking power when stooping upon and killing its prey in the air, along with the great distances with which it has been known to travel, the peregrine is certainly a bird of extremes. These mind-blowing feats are what makes the peregrine so famous, as they are the most amazing and well-known parts of its repertoire, but there's so much more to this incredible bird to learn. As well as being the fastest and among the furthest travelling of all the large falcons, the peregrine is also probably the most widespread and also the most diverse in terms of its subspecies, as there are many different races of this bird that many are not as familiar with. Each of the different peregrine races varies somewhat in coloration, size and distribution, but they are all within the same species. From among these various subspecies, the one that we are going to focus on in this video happens to be the largest and one of the most physically impressive of them all, the Peel's peregrine. In this video, we shall examine much of the life history and physical feats of this incredible bird, as well as displaying some impressive footage and images, many of which are probably not seen before. As a brief side note to this introduction, the peregrine has always been my favourite among all the birds of prey, and the Peel's peregrine is one of my favourites of all the subspecies, so this video has long been in the making, and I hope you enjoy it. As briefly mentioned in the early introduction of this video, the peregrine is the most widespread of all the large falcons, found on almost every continent on Earth. Living across each of these different continents with slight physical and behavioural modifications are a range of different subspecies of peregrine. The number of different peregrine subspecies worldwide is considerably higher than that of some other falcon species, with 19 or 20 overall subspecies depending on who you ask, as there is some disagreement on what species may actually be valid. The Barbary falcon, for example, is considered by many to be the smallest of all the peregrines, while others consider it to be a very close relative with lots of physical features in common, but still somewhat different. This relatively small falcon does have a lot in common with other species, such as the red nape Shaheen, which is extremely similar looking and is usually considered to be a part of the peregrine family. The largest peregrine subspecies in the world are found in the Northern Hemisphere, and in the case of the Peel's peregrine, that includes the Pacific Northwest, near Canada and Alaska. Alongside two other peregrine races, Anatum and Tundras, the Peel's is one of only three peregrine races found across the North American continent. Even when compared to other peregrine subspecies, the Peel's peregrine has a very strong affinity to the coastline, and many individuals will not even come within a couple of miles inland. In the wild, they are found exclusively along the coastlines of the Pacific Northwest, from Washington to Alaska. They are also found on various islands isolated along the Bering Sea, between Alaska and Russia, including the Commander and Aleutian Isles. This rugged and beautiful habitat is home to a wide range of seabirds, many of which the Peel's peregrine predates on. Like other coastal peregrines, the Peel's uses the rocky cliff faces as nesting and perching locations. Even so, this environment can be unforgiving at times. Freezing temperatures can afflict these coastlines, especially in the grip of winter, and they are also plagued by violent coastal storms, exacerbated by the ocean. The potentially stormy and very cold conditions along this rugged coastal landscape can present a very harsh challenge for many species. The Peel's falcon, however, is physically and behaviourally very well adapted to this environment, and one could say that in many ways, the physical harshness of this ecosystem 
has moulded it into the formidable bird it truly is. The Peels is on average the largest peregrine alive today and arguably the most powerfully built. As with many bird species, the world's largest peregrine individuals are typically from the Northern Hemisphere, but the size of the largest Peels peregrines truly is quite impressive. As you can see from this still image of a juvenile female Peels peregrine, these falcons can reach some impressive sizes. The average body length of these adult peregrines from beak to tail ranges from 41 to 47 centimetres with a wingspan between 92 and 111 centimetres, though there are some individuals that can get even larger. Even by peregrine standards, however, Peel's peregrines have an exceptionally powerful build, with an almost barrel-chested chunky appearance and exceptionally muscular limbs. The larger female birds are especially muscular, with a very powerful broad-shouldered build, with a much heavier and denser body than many other falcons. They also have a distinctively large and powerful head and bill, as you can see from this individual. Peel's peregrines are built much the same as most other large northern peregrine subspecies, only they are typically larger again, with a heavier, more dense build and comparatively broader wings and tail feathers. Most individuals have an average body weight ranging between 810 and 1597 grams. This is slightly heavier than many other large peregrine subspecies, but Peel's falcons can get considerably larger. A relatively recent account mentioned the discovery of a young female Peel's peregrine, which weighed around 57 ounces, which equates to roughly 1,616 grams. This exceptional figure not only exceeds the body weight of many male jerk falcons or jerkins, it also approaches or even rivals that of some larger female jerk falcons. This truly shows the size at which some of the largest Peel's falcons can reach, so much so that they may actually challenge some jerk falcons in size, making them one of the larger falcon species in the world. If accurate, this weight record may also prove to be one of the most extreme ever recorded for a wild peregrine. Then again, there's almost certainly the possibility that there may be many more out there that could get even larger. Even so, this is not to downgrade the other larger peregrine subspecies in terms of their own sizes, as some individuals of their own groups can reach some pretty impressive statistics themselves. Some of the largest individuals belonging to the nominate subspecies, Peregrinus, as you can see here, and Calidus, can themselves reach sizes rivaling some peels. Another peregrine subspecies worth mentioning when it comes to size is the Anatum peregrine, or more specifically, the Eastern Rock Anatum. These were a variant of the Anatum peregrine, which is the most widespread of North America's peregrine subspecies. These peregrines were well known for their distinctive plumage coloration, and also the fact that some individuals could reach some great sizes for their kind. One especially large individual was captured in Washington DC by famous falconer Al Nye. It was a huge female falcon which weighed over 54 ounces or 1530 grams. So it seems at least for a time these anatoms could definitely rival some Peel's falcons in size, which makes it all the more tragic that this variant of the anatom is believed to be no more. Like virtually all birds of prey in the world, the female peregrine is considerably larger than the smaller male, and the Peel's peregrine is no exception. The females are on average a third larger than their male counterparts, which are referred to as tiercels, a reference to the French word tiercy, meaning one third. As well as their large size, Peel's peregrines are also easily distinguishable from most other peregrine subspecies, from their distinctive coloration. Their plumage patterns differ somewhat from some other peregrines, though not by a great extent. In their mature plumage, 
the Peel's Peregrine retains much the same kinds of coloration characteristics as virtually all other peregrine subspecies, most notably the pale underside with the black bars going across, the somewhat slate or bluish-grey upper parts and the distinctive darkened head. In Peel's peregrines, however, the plumage appears to be even darker still, with an especially darkened head and even thicker barring across the chest, especially with the females or falcons as they are known. With the exception of the thick black barring across their chest, the colour of the underside is typically white or grey, although some Peel's peregrines, especially the Aleutian peregrines, sometimes have traces of black in between, or grey, which is much darker than that of other peregrines. It has been suggested by some that this increase of dark coloration caused by melanin, the pigment used to create dark coloration, is an adaptation for the Peel's peregrine's environment, as the melanin traces inside the feathers make them somewhat stronger and more resistant to cold or dampness. Juvenile Peel's peregrines are even darker in coloration still, with some individuals appearing to be almost completely black from a distance, with traces of grey in between. This is somewhat in contrast to the more reddish-brown of other juvenile peregrines, which are in their first year. Considering the size of some of these Peel's peregrines, along with their unusually broad wings and dark coloration, you can see many similarities with other large falcons, especially jur falcons. The young birds will retain their coloration for their first year after they've left their nest, and then when the molting season comes along, they will molt into their adult plumage. As with nearly any animal or bird, individuals within this subspecies will vary somewhat to some degree, with slight modifications and changes in coloration and also to a degree in patterns. For example, some individuals may have a somewhat paler dorsal side than other individuals, which may be a result of genetics or maybe because they spend more time in the sunshine. For those who don't know, bird feathers can be sun bleached over time, making them appear paler. Some individuals, such as this bird, have a gorgeous bluish tinge to their upper parts and traces of rufous on their chest. Other individuals, however, are darker both above and below, with a greyish underside and an almost jet black dorsal side. In falconry terms, the falcon family are referred to as long wings as they have long pointed wings for fast flight, but the peels has unusually broad wings as you can see here. As a large coastal species of peregrine, the Peels is well adapted for the harsh environment of the Pacific Northwest. For starters, its large size is a useful adaptation. The general rule of thumb is most animal species become larger the further north you go. This is usually because larger animals and birds tend to deal better with colder, harsher environments associated with the northern hemisphere than smaller ones, as the larger you are, the more body heat you can retain. Larger Peel's falcons do seem to have slightly thicker feathers than some other peregrines, but not to a great extent. The Peel's peregrine is also superbly adapted physically for long distance and high speed flight. They may not travel as great distances as some other peregrine subspecies, but they definitely get around. Much of the Peel's peregrine's hunting life revolves around catching birds on the wing often high over rugged and rocky coastlines where the weather conditions can be treacherous. On top of this, Peel's peregrines may have to travel over large expanses of coastline and ocean, and sometimes even between small islands in search of prey, 
where they will often involve catching prey on the wing, striking them down with tremendous force, and also carrying large prey items to feed themselves or their young back at the nest. This hunting and travelling behaviour may explain why the Peel's peregrine has proportionally large and broad wings, even by peregrine standards, and a comparatively higher muscular density. Some have suggested that the Peel's peregrine may actually be the fastest peregrine subspecies in level flight, which may not be too far-fetched considering the bird's size and increased muscular density, especially around the pectoralis and leg muscles. The bigger the bird, the greater the speed in level flight as the general rule. Some of these behaviours and adaptations make the Peel's peregrine almost somewhat like a Jur falcon or Saker falcon, which are other large falcon species well known for being exceptional when it comes to pursuing prey both at high speed and over long distances in level flight. The sheer size and musculature of these falcons truly is impressive to behold, and is most visually apparent especially in the largest female falcons, such as this fine physical specimen. In the wild, Peel's falcons largely feed on coastal seabirds, many of which are large and powerful themselves, and others fast flying. This kind of prey base also explains the Peel's falcon's large size and powerful build, as well as their impressive set of weaponry. Even by falcon standards, Peel's peregrines, especially the larger female individuals such as this one here, have an especially large and powerful beak. Not only is the beak proportionally quite long in relation to the skull, it is also especially thick and powerful, which combined with powerful jaw muscles, gives this particular species, along with most other larger falcons, a pretty powerful bite. All falcons, indeed all birds of prey, have a strongly hooked beak used to tear apart and consume their prey. Falcons, however, are the only raptors with a specialised notch on their upper mandible, known as a tomial tooth. They use this specialised feature, combined with their powerful jaw muscles, to bite through the necks of their prey, killing them instantly. A peregrine's primary method of catching and dispatching its prey, at least when in the air, are its exceptionally powerful feet and razor-sharp talons. Peregrines have especially large feet in proportion to their body size, even compared to most other falcons, thanks to their especially long toes, which are an adaptation for binding to birds in flight or striking them down in a high-speed stoop. The extra long toes combined with the long sharp talons enable them to dig through feathers and grasp hold of birds much more effectively if they chose to. All peregrines have big feet in relation to their body size, but Peel's peregrines have monstrously large toes, giving their feet an even larger appearance. Falcons differ slightly from hawks and eagles in how they kill their prey, especially when it comes to their talons. While hawks and eagles primarily rely on the crushing, gripping power of their toes combined with their talons puncturing vital areas of their victims, falcons rely more on the sheer devastating blow they inflict with their talons in a diving attack or stoop. Nevertheless, they still retain a tremendous amount of power in their grip strength, and they can still easily snatch or bind to prey in mid-air, holding and puncturing it in a vice-like grip. With these exceptionally large feet and great talons, combined with their very powerful bill, the Peel's peregrine is especially well suited to tackling large and powerful prey, including the many seabirds with which it shares its habitat with. Across the world, peregrines primarily feed on other birds, although they will occasionally feed on mammals as well. The prey range of peregrines can be incredibly varied, and they are known to take anything from the size of a sparrow to prey up to the size of a goose. The Peel's falcon in this respect is quite interesting, 
because despite its relatively restricted range along the coastline of the Pacific Northwest, it has one of the most varied prey bases among any of the North American peregrines. As previously mentioned, it is a large and very powerful bird, and is more than happy to tackle large and strong seabirds, but it also hunts a lot of smaller prey. These can include storm petrels and kittiwakes, a small type of gull. On this occasion, however, a coot became the peregrine's prey item. The majority of the Peel's falcon's diet, however, consists of larger seabirds including alcids, the family that orcs belong to, and large gulls. These can be quite large and strong birds themselves, but the Peel's falcon is well built to tackle them. They will frequently pursue these gulls in a tail chase, or will dive on them from a height in a stoop to take them out. However, although Peel's falcons certainly are capable of taking large gulls regularly when they want to, when they can, they often predate smaller seabirds if possible, as they tend to be somewhat easier prey items. Coastal duck species passing through, as well as wading birds like these avocets for example, will occasionally be attacked too, and even sometimes mammals, but their most favoured prey item by far seem to be orcs. One of their most popular prey items is the rather funky looking crested orklet, a somewhat strange looking relative of the puffin. A study on Amchitka Island, an island in the Aleutian Peninsula, crested orklets formed about 27% of Peel's peregrine's diet. Another favourite prey item of the Peel's peregrine is the ancient murrelet, a small fast flying species of seabird which is also a member of the orc family. On that same Aleutian island of Amchitka, over 17% of the overall Peel's peregrine's diet was ancient murrelet, with over 65% of the total diet of these birds consisting of alcids or members of the orc family. Whether the prey is large or small, the Peel's peregrine certainly is a very adept and tenacious predator. In falconry, the peregrine as a whole is one of the most beloved and highly prized of all hunting birds, and the Peel's peregrine is certainly no exception. The Peel's peregrine has a reputation of being somewhat more cantankerous and aggressive than some other peregrine subspecies, at least when it comes to handling. However, once they are flying well and going strong on the wing pursuing game, they are very aggressive hunters and extremely hard hitters, being able to take a very wide range of game thanks to their impressive power, size and speed. As a species, the peregrine's most famous and beloved attribute of all is of course its tremendous speed. But this supreme aerial hunter has various tricks when it comes to capturing prey in flight. Peregrines will often hunt by chasing down birds in level flight, or direct pursuit as it's known. Given its large size, increased musculature and broad wings, the Peel's falcon has been argued to be the fastest of all peregrines in level flight, and they frequently are observed chasing prey in this manner. However, pursuing prey in level flight does have its drawbacks. For example, many of the birds the Peel's falcon might hunt will take refuge in the water or any small crags along the coastline. Peregrines are also known to engage in a hunting behaviour known as still hunting, where they will perch high up on a cliff face and watch for birds passing beneath them before dropping upon them at high speed. However, the peregrine's most devastating and infamous hunting attack by far, the one in which it achieves such tremendous speeds, is a hunting behaviour known as the stoop. This is when a falcon takes flight and then climbs into the sky, reaching a height anywhere between a few hundred to a few thousand or more feet off the ground. Once it has reached its preferred height above the ground, or pitch as it's known in falconry terms, the falcon scans the ground and skyline beneath with its razor-sharp vision for a suitable target, often when circling upon high at great altitude. Like all birds of prey, the peregrine's eyesight is far superior to that of a human's and they can spot a moving target over one and a half to two miles away from their location. 
Once it has spotted or selected its preferred target, the peregrine will do a sudden barrel roll like manoeuvre in mid-air and starts plummeting down at great speed toward its prey. As it begins its descent, it rapidly beats its wings which at this point the primaries or long pointed parts of its wings are swept backwards to reduce wind resistance, but once it reaches terminal velocity, that is its maximum speed, it will often completely close its wings and form a perfect teardrop shape. At this point, with little to no wind resistance to slow it down, the super streamlined peregrine plummets ever faster towards its target. It's at this point the peregrine reaches speeds unmatched by any other living animal, reaching well over 200 miles per hour, with one bird being clocked at an astonishing 242 miles per hour. Using all of its tremendous speed to close the distance between itself and its chosen target, the peregrine then strikes its prey with a devastating blow, driving all of its speed and momentum into its target. The brunt of this impact is delivered by its large and powerful taloned feet, which are incredibly strong and designed to resist such forces. Peregrines have comparatively shorter and more muscular legs than many other birds, designed for impact. They have exceptionally muscular thighs and a shorter, thicker tarsus compared to many other raptors. With such a strong and powerful build, combined with shock-absorbing muscles and tendons in their legs, and their large, very powerful feet and talons, peregrines can deliver an incredibly powerful blow, and they seem able to shrug it off most of the time. However, it's not only the tremendous power of the peregrine strike which makes it such a devastating attack, it's also their razor-sharp talons, which rake and slice through the prey's body, combined with the hammering impact, often causing massive and fatal damage. In the most extreme cases, falcons can strike prey with such tremendous force that they completely decapitate their prey, or even virtually split their victim's body in two. Now considering that the Peel's peregrine is often heavier and larger than other members of its kind, combined with its tenacious attitude and considerably powerful build, even by peregrine standards, one could say that in theory, a Peel's peregrine, especially a very large individual, committing itself to a very high speed stoop from the greatest height possible, could be one of the hardest hitting, if not the hardest hitting, of all the peregrine subspecies, or even of all falcons. Another method of attack used by falcons like these is known as binding, where they essentially fly into their prey at great speed and then grasp them with their talons, holding onto them while they land or reach the ground. A falcon's main means of dispatching its prey, other than killing it outright in a dive strike, is using its powerful beak, and the peel's peregrine has an especially large and powerful one at that, as previously mentioned. Using a specialised appendage on their upper mandible, known as a tomial tooth, falcons like this will kill by biting through the necks of their prey, often severing their prey's spinal cord with a single biting and twisting motion. With such incredible striking power and formidable weaponry, the Peel's falcon certainly is a very aggressive and efficient hunter. Surely, this amazing bird, with such impressive attributes, should have little competition and few rivals to it in the wild. Well, in the wild, the majority of the threats facing this magnificent bird, as with most other creatures, sadly, is man, but there are one or two species that can give even the Peel's falcon a run for its money at times. One of these rivals that seems to get the most mention when related to this falcon is the mighty bald eagle, an iconic species which often overlaps in range and habitat with the Peel's falcon. Encounters between these two different raptors appears to be rare in the wild, but there does seem to be at least some competition for resources such as nesting rights, territory 
and even to some extent feeding. It is well known that large eagles such as bald eagles and golden eagles were kept to parasitize or steal prey from other raptors including peregrines and will even sometimes kill smaller raptors like falcons on the ground given the chance. The peregrine however is an extremely fast and highly territorial hunter and will fiercely defend its territory and its offspring if it has to. Although large eagles like the bald eagle appear lumbering at first when on the wing, they can be surprisingly manoeuvrable and deceptively fast when they want to. But even so, the peregrine usually holds the advantage in an aerial battle, especially if it has the height advantage, as it is much faster and more agile. If an eagle is spotted nearby in flight, a peregrine will frequently approach and aggressively mob and harass the eagle to drive it out of its territory, often making close stooping manoeuvres to drive the eagle away. Sometimes, however, these confrontations can turn deadly, and peregrines have been known to kill birds up to the size of golden and bald eagles during these aerial attacks. Like virtually all coastal living peregrines of the world, Peel's peregrines primarily nest on open ledges or crags on the edge of their coastal home on cliffs, although they will sometimes use disused nests from other birds that have previously made them, including ravens for example. After mating with her partner, the Tearsel, in early spring, the female typically then digs a small depression on this ledge or whatever she nests on and lays three to four eggs on average. The coloration of all peregrines eggs are fairly similar throughout the subspecies as they are usually a reddish brown. Once all of her eggs are laid in the single clutch, the female, with assistance from her mate, will incubate them for a period of over 30 to 32 days. When the young finally hatch, the mother falcon protects and keeps her offspring warm and also does most of the feeding towards them, whereas the male or tearsel provides most of the prey for the family, although as the youngsters grow, their appetites also grow and so eventually both parents will take turns in hunting if necessary. Watching a mother falcon feed her chicks, it is quite remarkable how such a powerful hunter can be surprisingly gentle and delicate with her offspring. The peregrine chicks will consume an incredible amount of meat as they develop, and as a result, they grow especially quickly. In fact, by around 35 to 42 days of age after hatching, the chicks will be about the same size as their parents and will be able to fly the nest or fledge. With its impressive size, great speed and physical strength, the Peel's falcon is an amazing bird of prey. The peregrine has always been a huge favourite of mine and the Peel's peregrine in particular stands out to me, mostly because of its sheer size, power and also its impressive coloration and tenacity. This video has been especially fun to make and is also the longest video so far on this channel. I hope you have all enjoyed and learned something new about this amazing species. But before this video ends, a quick shout out to the viewers and subscribers of this channel. As I am making the finishing touches to this video, this channel is currently sitting at well over 12,800 subscribers. This is an amazing achievement and I could have never expected this channel to grow as fast as it has so far. So thank you all for subscribing and watching my videos. So once again, thank you all and until next time, I'll see you all in the next one.